Today, I'd like to take a closer look at one of the starter decks, Lockmore Kingdom's Prime Legion deck. This is not a strategy guide, but instead, this is my first impression about the deck and how I think the deck can be played. Hopefully, this series, if I can continue, gives some sense of playstyle variation in Dracalion to those who are wondering about. First, let's take a look at the specific mechanics that developers have decided to put into this deck. When you look at the Prime Legion starter deck, the first thing you notice is many cards have discard in their text ability. This is indeed the core mechanics in this deck. There are three categories of discard usage in this deck. Recipient bonus, donor bonus, discard generator. The first in category is those cards that gain bonus if another card was discarded during this turn. Although this seems a simple mechanics, there's only one card takes this advantage. The most representative category is those cards that gain bonus when they are discarded. For example, Convinced Fanatic can deal 1 damage to a target opposing character on the melee line when it is discarded. Hellhound is an example where its cost is reduced when deployed through discard method. Offering in the name of a Lilith is an event type card that gives you 1 gold when it is discarded. I counted 7 total unique cards, or 28 cards, in this deck which is nearly half of the deck falling under this category. The third category is those that allow you to discard a card. Obviously you need these to get cards into the discard pile. In this category, we have 5 unique cards for a total of 20 cards in main deck. Some can be a one-time trigger, and the other may have multiple use during the game. I really appreciate the fact they all have draw a card text with it, so discarding does not shrink your hand size. Maneuver cards are resource cards in Dracalion, and very interesting. Personally, I've never played a TCG that felt playing a resource card had so much tactical impact. Unlike other TCGs I've played, developers have decided not to tease tactical resource cards until later expansion and rather just give us the system's power from the very beginning. No single maneuver card included in starter deck has a blank text and all of them seem to have tactical uh, influence. So looking at maneuver cards are an important aspect of deck strategy. Each starter deck has three affiliation specific maneuver cards. For Prime Legion, all three cards have discarded Prime Legion in their ability. In this game, each player is given opportunity to use combat abilities before the final combat damage calculation, and the resolution takes place. This is analogous to another TCG with interactive combat tricks like instant or reaction cards. Additionally, melee attack combat has repulsed. Given characters' damage in Dracalion do not reset after each turn, repulse damage is essentially reducing controller's total bold state presence. On the contrary, each action resolves instantly and does not incite repulse. So action-based damage or non-combat damage can be quite effective and powerful in the right situation. In this deck, there are 4 unique or 16 total main deck cards that can inflict non-combat damage to the target opponent character. Amongst currently revealed cards from 4 starter decks, I believe there is only one another main deck card that can deal non-combat damage outside of the Lockmore Kingdom deck. In fact, Prime Legion City card, which starts the game from the beginning, has default ability of dealing one non-combat damage when its counters are charged. One of the three Prime Legion specific maneuver card 
also has currently the highest non-combat damage possible from a single card. Again, this seems to confirm dealing non-combat damage is an important part of this deck's strategy. In this game, who goes first on the first turn is determined by initiative value specified in the banner. Lockmore deck has the highest initiative amongst all four starter decks revealed so far. This simply indicates this deck really wants to go first. For the city ability use, you need six of your own characters to be destroyed. This allows me to infer that the deck is anticipating high character turnaround. Now let's put it all together and deduce how this deck can be played. I'd like to emphasize once again this is purely my personal first impression. If anyone who is watching this and knows a better way to play this deck, please comment and kindly share with us the correct way. Deck play style and archetype is conceptual, but I think it guides players how one should be playing the deck and help making in-game decision when multiple choices are presented. There are various ways to classify deck archetypes in the TCG, and some way may be assigning arbitrary. I personally like either aspect or axis analysis written on Magic the Gathering Wikipedia site. These systems feel relatively systematic and generic, so they can be applied to pretty much any other TCG with minor self-interpretation and translation. I normally use aspect analysis, but I do not have enough experience with Dracalion to know what's the fairness trade definition in this game yet. So I have decided to go with axis analysis today. A threat is a card that can win the game if left unchecked. Sometimes it includes the idea of smaller threats that combine to form a bigger threat. An answer is a card that deals with or removes a threat. Even with this card engine, their primary goal remains to directly damage opponent characters in this deck. So this is a threat-oriented deck. As a side, I think example of answer in Dracarian are abilities such as Interceptor where you redirect, attack, or shield to reduce damage. These abilities do not win a game by themselves no matter how many you can stack them. However, they are there to keep target character on the board longer. Does your deck have to win fast, or does it have to survive the game long enough to stabilize and close out? Without adding any heal or health buff effects, the average health point of Prime Legion starter deck characters is 4.1. This is the lowest amongst all full starter decks revealed so far. Thus, I believe this is a good indication that this deck wants to win as fast as possible, especially knowing all decks have the same number of characters. So this is tempo oriented. Does your deck have a lot of cards that basically do the same thing? Or does it rely on a few important key pieces to function? All starter decks have 10 characters, two of which are named characters. These are thematic, and more powerful characters. However, neither are considered essential. As expected in the starter deck, all cards are replaceable and therefore they are redundant. So three axes for this deck are threat, tempo, and redundant. This is indeed aggro archetype. Prior to playing this deck for the first time, I had only played a couple other games using Wasteland deck. Both times I played against Talislin deck and never even watched Lockmore being played. On my first two games, I was focusing on learning the game rule and flow. Although I pondered even during those two games, I had no master game plan. However, my first time game with Prime Legion deck was the first game I had a strategy set for the game, which was Agro Archetype Strategy. The master plan was to deal the highest damage in the fastest pace. The damage dealt on my characters was irrelevant unless it loses me the game. My imaginally ideal game flow was my troops continued destroying opponents fast enough 
so that they must keep spending their action and or goals to either play a new character, heal or shield to protect their existing characters. These threats prevent my opponent from initiating combat attack. Since most characters' repulse value is lower than the attack value, this embodies attack is the best form of defense. For instance, I attacked with pernicious vanguard immediately following its deployment on my very next turn, even knowing that it will result him to go into discard pile. For the selection of maneuvers, I try to choose those that deal damage from the first turn until I run out of them. Having a master plan, especially aggro one, I have quickly realized the tactical advantage of being the first player in this game. Initially, this felt artificially less relevant than the other TCG I've played. The first player priority determines two important orders at the beginning of the turn. The deployment ability resolution of the maneuver and who take the very first action during the action phase. As a simple example, imagine following a situation. My opponent has one last character with three health at the beginning of new turn. I chose grow in their suffering so I can close the game. My opponent chose hostile Ariel guide to heal three health of the character. Depending on who has the first player priority, the result is win or game continues. This makes sound the retreat far more important action than I had originally thought. In general, I felt aggro deck should try holding the first player priority to keep playing the beatdown role. This required a tactical decision when to stop attacking so I can retain the first player priority next turn. It's something I never had to think about in other TCGs I played. I may be slightly biased at the moment due to the honeymoon phase of new game hype, but I could have just had the best aggro deck experience with this single game. Despite feeling full traditional aggro archetype gameplay, I was surprised how much decision making I could do. In summary, I had a blast with Prime Legion deck, playing as pure aggro archetype strategy. Thank you for watching. If you find this helpful and want to see another starter deck coverage like this, please comment, hit like, and or subscribe. Most importantly, if you haven't played this game, go check it out yourself. Let me know what you think.